Hello, we're now going to continue our classification of equilibrium points into various types of standard behaviour by looking at what happens when our linearization, the A matrix in our linearization, has complex um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we're now interested in well, we're interested in the same approximation, which is so as long as the real part of the eigenvalues of our A matrix are not equal to zero, then delta x dot can be approximated by the linear solution. And we're now going to look at the case A has complex eigenvalues. And the name for the types of phase portraits that we get around um, these particular types of equilibrium point, they're called, it's called a focus. So if we have um, an equilibrium point with a linearization A with complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors, then this type of behavior is called a focus. And maybe you can already guess what's going to come, complex eigenvalues and vectors. We're maybe expecting some sort of spiraling behavior, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Um, so it's a little bit uh, complicated to, or it gets extremely messy to derive the precise shape of these foci. So instead, we're just going to do a simple example. And then I'm just going to claim that more general cases um, will look similar and you're welcome to get stuck into the algebra yourself if you want. Um, so let's just look at the special case that the matrix A is given by. Um, and let's say minus one, minus one, one, minus one. So uh, just like before, we're going to use our eigenvalue, eigenvector um, method for solving um, this uh, ODE, and in this case, this A matrix has eigenvalues um, lambda 1 and lambda 2. These are equal to um, minus 1 plus j, so this is the square root of minus 1. I'm an electrical engineer, so there are no i's here. And then here we've got its complex conjugates. Um, and here we've got our corresponding eigenvectors. Well, with this eigenvalue, we have the eigenvector 1 minus j. And with this one, we have 1 j. So you can go away and check these for yourself if you want. Um, but those are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So um, how can we use these to build some solutions to our ODE to give us a feel for what the trajectories are going to look like around the equilibrium point. Um, so the motivations will become clear in a bit, I think. Um, but let's just investigate what happens when um, delta x 0 is equal to the vector 1 0. So, this isn't one of our um, eigenvectors, so how are we going to be able to use our clever eigenvector method for solving ODEs? Um, well, we're just going to rewrite this 1, 0 in a bit of a clever way. And in particular, we're going to say that this is equal to a half of 1 minus j plus 1 j. And if you want to generalize this method to arbitrary matrices with um, complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you need to use a generalization of this trick. Um, and so how does this help? Well, we know that given um, an eigenvector, um, our solution can be written just in terms of the eigenvalue. So this tells us, in fact, that delta x t is equal to, well, we know it's e to the a t multiplied by our initial condition, which is now a half of 1 minus j plus 1 j. Uh, yeah, I need to 
brackets here. Uh, but this is just equal to a half e to the lambda 1 t of 1 minus j plus e to the lambda 2 t lots of 1 minus j. So we're making some progress. Um, let's get to town and try and simplify this thing a bit. Um, so what do we get? Well, if we just keep persevering with the algebra, we get delta x of t is equal to, and now we have half e to the lambda 1 t. What's lambda 1? Well, lambda 1 is minus 1 plus j. So let's uh, write that out a little bit. So that's e to the minus t. So that's coming from a minus 1. And then here we've got e to the j t. And this thing is multiplied by 1 minus j. And then uh, we have e to the minus t. And now we have e to the minus j, because we've got a minus sign here, multiplied by our other eigenvector, which was 1 j. And now we're getting really close to something familiar. So let's pull the e to the minus t out. And now what do I have? Well, I have a half e to the jt plus e to the minus jt. So that's just the e to the jt plus e to the minus jt. We've got the half from here. We pulled the e to the minus t's out. And what do we get here? Well, we get half j. And then um, e to the minus jt. Uh, minus e to the j t. And then you go to one of your data books or you dig deep into your memory and you realize that this is just cos t and sine t. So now we have a solution for a particular initial condition. What does it look like? Well, let's just draw it on our phase portrait. So here we have x2 and x1 as normal. Let's say this was our equilibrium point x star. And we look at an initial condition, delta x of 0 in the direction 1 and 0. So we start some at some point sort of nudge slightly in the x1 direction. And then our solution looks like this. So at time t is equal to 0, we just have 1, 0, and 1. So we're exactly here. And then as time passes, well, the y-coordinate gets bigger as sine t gets bigger, and the cos t gets smaller. And so we end up with some spiral thing that looks something like that. And that's all that's going on here. This is what a focus looks like. So when you have um, complex eigenvalues, you have some spiraling in to the origin, um, or away from the origin. So if the real part of the eigenvalues are less than zero, you spiral in. And this is a stable focus. And the converse is an unstable focus. So if this is greater than zero, then we have an unstable focus. And all that would happen is our trajectories would be, they would still be spiraling, but they would be following a pattern that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So a slight confusing detail is how do we know which way the spiral is going? Um, okay, fine, we can work through a big long calculation like this to determine it, but that's a bit tedious. A much quicker way is to just, um, Pick some point here and just evaluate our A matrix. So to give a, an example, so to get the direction, just solve A and then with some 
nominal initial vector, so let's say delta x is 1, 0, because that's what we were doing up here. Um, so for our particular A matrix, which was minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 0, what do we get? Well, this is just minus 1, 1. So this tells us that at the point, um, at a point, sort of a distance 1, 0 away, that x dot points in this direction, and this direction is minus 1, 1. So our x dot is pointing in this direction. Why is this x dot? Well, it's because of this equation here. And from this, we know it's spiraling in or out based just on uh, the eigenvalues. And now, if it's pointing this way, then it must be spiraling in in this anti-clockwise manner. So, that's what a, foc a focus is, um, stable or unstable focus. We've now just got a few annoying special cases to complete our uh, classification of equilibrium points in 2G systems.